Hi, I'm Julia Griffith in association with Gem A. Today we're going to be discussing the 10 times loop and I'm going to give you some tips and tricks to help you get started if you're a beginner. The 10 times loop is an extremely useful identification tool. It allows us magnified views of inclusions and features of gems, which helps us identify the stone or at least narrow down its possibilities. Now the key thing to note about the 10 times loop is its focal distance. A 10 times loop has an inch focal range, which means that the gemstone must be one inch away from the lens and the lens must be one inch away from your eye. Now to help fix this distance, it's a really good idea to keep your hands connected together and then your hands connected to your face. And this way we can fix the distance, keep ourselves steady and allow ourselves to view the gemstone clearly. Now before you start observing your stone, open your loop fully and just place it to one side because first we need to make sure that our gemstone is clean, so give it a really good clean with the gem cloth and then pick it up with your tongs. So if you just place the gemstone so that it's face down, bring your tongs around its girdle and pick it up and then transfer it to your non-dominant hand ready to view. Pick up your loop with your dominant hand and I actually recommend placing your forefinger through the gap in the loop and then clasp it together either side with your thumb and forefinger so that it's kind of a handle for your loop. Now hold your loop vertical and your tongs vertical and as you can see I've got mine currently from the side view and the reason for this is so that I can actually fix the distance and see my distance before I actually try and blindly focus in on the gem. So have the stone and the lens parallel to one another. You might need to reposition your hands. For example, some people clasp together to get the right distance. Um, some people hold it a bit further away and touch their fingers together, but contact is key. That's very important to keep yourself stable. Then once you're in a fixed position, just turn the loop and the stone, so rotate your hands so that the lens is facing you, and then bring your face in to the loop. And with a minor adjustment, you should be pretty much in focus. Now, please note that actually I'm keeping the tongs and the loop completely parallel to one another to get the inch distance and not tilting, um, because that actually will knock most of the gem out of focus. I need them to be parallel to one another, to be in focus, and then everything connecting. And actually, if I show you the side view, you can see that my hand is touching my face. You may also notice that my other eye, so my left eye, is open. And the reason for that is that if you actually close it, you end up squinting and causing eye strain, and you can't actually see the image very clearly. So you're meant to just relax your face completely, breathe, it's always very handy and then just look at the gem. I'm also very vertical in my position. That way, when I have a light source nearby, I can go right under the light source and it just illuminates the stone within. If I wanted to see reflections, I can just tilt the stone away from myself slightly, but you still need the inch focal range and notice I'm still touching everything together. If you want to view the back of the stone, you can just turn the stone around. This is why we hold it in our non-dominant hand. Fix your position again, so a one inch focal range, and then bring to your face again to view the back of the stone. And that's it. With a bit of practice, it should become second nature, but fixing the distance, keeping your eyes open, these are all real um, good practices that we highly recommend. Now for larger stones or stones that are a cabochon cut or rough stones, uh, you don't need tongs at all. Uh, but when you do hold the gem, which I'm just holding the faceted gem for, um, but when you hold the gem, you still wanna fix it so it's an inch away, maintain contact with your hands, and then bring that to your face once again, maintaining contact, eye open. So the exact same process you'll just notice that you'll be getting fingerprints on your stone. Uh, but that's it. I hope that you found this instructional video helpful and good luck with your practice. <laughs>